Hello, my loves. It's Liz Ann here. And today I wanted to do a quick video to talk about some ways that you can uh, begin to meditate, incorporate meditation. So some of you are just starting out in meditation and some of you have tried it in the past but have never stuck with it. And some of you have a really, really strong resistance to it. I'm not going to say that meditation is the be all end all to anything, okay? But what I do want you to understand is that the greatest benefit I see to meditation, especially for somebody who is dealing with a trauma brain, so somebody that has gone through trauma, enough trauma in their life that they are in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn state. They feel triggered easily. They have anxiety issues. And so the benefit, the most powerful benefit of meditation is the ability to shut the mind down. Okay, so people that are in these states usually have a monkey mind. And they go, 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 go. And they ruminate, ruminate, ruminate. So if they get triggered about something they, one of their biggest things you'll hear them say is I can't put it down. I can't quit thinking about it. So I'm going to give you some quick um, tips on meditation. If you're just beginning and you have that monkey brain, because I know from experience, because I do ha have that monkey brain and I do tend to be in a state of arousal. And when that happens, when you go to try to meditate, you are going to find a lot of resistance because it's sometimes so frustrating that you're like sitting there trying to think and concentrate and so many things happen. Your mind won't shut down. Your, uh, you, you know, a lot of guided meditations tell you to, you know, focus on your breath. And if you have a lot of anxiety, that's just going to aggravate it because what gets affected most is our breathing, right? So we don't want that to be our focal point. Although we do still use some breath techniques in the beginning of meditation, we don't want our breath to be a focal point if we're in hyper arousal, okay? So the is I understand the frustration of it and that's why I'm creating this video to uh, help you to be able to begin. It's like the beginner's course to sh calm down the mind, okay, through meditation. Because I personally have found that meditation, yes, I have resistance to it too, but I have found it to be one of my most relaxing, powerful, and uh, it, what has helped me do is, is help me to be able to, when I am ruminating, to have the power over my mind now to say, turn it off, to have that switch Okay, so if you think about it this way, I don't have a lot of upper body strength. I never have, and I've never been able to do a pull up my entire life. But if I wanted to do a pull up for whatever reason, if for for some reason I, you know, like I, I've thought about exercising my arms because someday I do want to be able to go out and maybe hike and climb up on some rocks and stuff. And I know I need some upper body strength for that, right? Okay, so I would probably start building up some muscle. And in the beginning, my muscles are going to be sore. Uh, there may be some resistance to it. Same thing with your mind. You've got to slowly begin to build it up so that you get some muscle. Because what do you want to do eventually? You want to be able to pull yourself up on that rock. You want to be able to do that push-up, right? So it's the same thing. You want to be able to go have the power and the strength to be able to turn the mind off and have some control over it. So that's what we're working towards when we're trying to shut down that monkey mind. Because rumination, especially if you've been triggered, is it just keeps you in these cycles of um, depression and frustration and anxiety. And, and when you're able to start getting some control over rumination, then those uh, cycles begin to diminish more and more and more until they're completely almost completely gone i wouldn't say that they're ever completely gone because life is life and we have ebbs and flows and things happen but we can get to a point where it's not the big a big player in our life anymore okay so the number one thing i would suggest is don't try to meditate in the beginning more than five minutes start with five minutes and then add one minute incrementally as you go as it feels good to you Okay, the thing is, is if even if you jump in for 20 minutes and you enjoy a big 20 minute um, 
meditation. If you come away with the feeling of, well, that felt good and I went 20 minutes, but well, that was a lot of time and that was, you know, and it was a struggle through the whole thing. Then you have created kind of this negative feedback, energetic feedback that when you need to go and do that again, you're not going to really want to because you're going to have this little, a little bit of a low lying energetic negative feedback that went along with it. So you want to set yourself up for success. So I would start with no more than five minutes. You could even make that three minutes if that's what you need. And all you're going to do, don't do a guided meditation. Don't put music on. Just get in a quiet place and do it in the morning before your mind's been activated with a, a ton of stuff, okay? Maybe you've had your coffee and stuff, but not when you've gone over your list and you, you're thinking about everything you got to do and this has happened and somebody called and you checked your phone and all this. Now your mind is already woo -doo 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 -doo, and it's going to be really hard, especially in the beginning, to get it into a meditative state. So you want to do it early enough in the day and you want to start out very short and you want to set yourself up for success with it. And then your only uh, goal is to turn your mind off, to literally empty it of thought. Okay, so some things that I would suggest is in the beginning, you want to calm down your parasymp or your sympathetic nervous system, right? And you want to do that by taking a few deep breaths. So some of the most calming ways to take those breaths are to breathe in and then what a couple times just take a deep breath and let it out without thinking about it and then about the third time to maybe start counting with it you breathe in you go and you one two three as you breathe in at the top of the breath and then you let it out so you breathe in through the nose out through the mouth and that can will help you uh, start to calm it down without getting all a bunch of anxiety around your breath, okay? And then if you want to and you feel like you need a, to take a few more breaths and, and calm it down some more, you can start to count uh, and slow down how uh, fast you breathe in and how uh, slowly you can slow down your out breath as well. So you count as you breathe in, you hold for a count, and then you count as you breathe out. And you can increase those as you go. Okay, so you might go, I'm going to count for a count of five as I breathe in. I'm going to go. And I'm going to hold it for three. Hope you got that because I threw my hand in there right at the last second. So you don't have to use your hand, but in your mind you'd be counting some. Again, you'd go. Okay, I'm full breath already, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to hold it for three, and then I'm going to try to let out slower. So what happens is you realize you're taking these quick, deep breaths, and then the counting is helping you to slow down. So now I'm going to try to do that five count again. I'm going to go. Okay, and then once you just feel relaxed and you don't feel like you need that anymore, you can do it a couple times, you can do it more if you want. If, just go with what's feeling good to you and once you just feel relaxed and ready, you'll close your eyes and just return to normal breathing. Take your mind off your breath as much as possible if you need to take a deep breath again here and there. Don't worry about it, just take it and don't worry about it. Okay, don't count it, don't focus on it, just take your breath. So you get your mind off your breath, you get your mind off everything. Okay, and here's a couple techniques. One is that you can just close your eyes and then just see the emptiness inside, you know, how it just emptied out your uh, vision, your stimuli, and there's nothing there. Okay, there may be, you know, light, a little bit of, you know, you know how you see things in the back of your lids or whatever, okay? But, but other than that, it's just empty. So you don't even have to pay attention to that. And you just hold that as long as you can. Just hold that emptiness without letting any thought in. You just think of it as your empty space right there. And you just concentrate on that. And just look at that empty space and keep it empty. Don't think about anything else. You're just looking at that empty space. 
Okay, and then do that for about as long as you're able. Do it maybe two or three times while you're sitting there as thoughts come in and you stop yourself and then you go back to, as the thoughts come in basically, so all of a sudden you notice, oh, my mind's over this or am I doing it right or all these thoughts and you go, wait, just empty space. You just remind yourself, nope, this is my empty space. Nope, nope, I don't need that thought. Nope, you just kind of just say, no, no, there's that thought. Mm. And in the beginning, that's how it's going to feel. No, 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 no. You know, in your mind, you're going to feel like you're trying to empty it. And then this comes in and that comes in. And you're thinking about whether it's empty and you're thinking about. So that's normal. Okay. Just keep at it. Okay. So that's why you don't want to do it more than five minutes at first, because otherwise you might just, you know, five minutes is enough to just like, oh, that was quick. No big deal. I'll get back to it tomorrow. Stick with five minutes for as long as you need. When you feel like you've mastered five minutes, and like five minutes is a breeze, it's easy, and you feel like you want to increase it, like you like you want to challenge yourself, then you can start staying there longer. Another way is that you in that space. One way I did it is I would hold it, and as I held it, just imagine that that space would slowly get bigger. Like there's more and more space. It's completely empty. I would just imagine that space getting bigger and bigger. And then as soon as thoughts came in, I'd bring it back down and then grow it again. Okay. That's another way that you can do it. And at the third way is that you could uh, just listen to something, empty your mind, and then just tune into the sounds around you. And what may be one particular sound without adding a storyline to it. So I might tune into the sound of my refrigerator hum right now, you know, and just listen to it. I'm not going to say, oh, it sounds like this, and it sounds like, oh, it just turned off. Or I might just turn into, for me, what works even more for me is I might start with something like that, but I'll just listen to all the different sounds that come up and just notice them without putting a story to it. So like right now, I hear a lawnmower. I might not go, I'm, I'll listen to it, but I won't go, oh, that must be so-and-so moan. Or, you know, I'll just if, if you can do that and tune in or hearing the bird, oh, that's this type of a bird. I don't do any of that because that's, again, the, mon the mind is running again with a storyline. So what you're doing is emptying it of thought and stories. You're, you're, you're coming into the present moment and you're leaving the field of thought and you're just being present with where you're at. And you're increasing that time a little bit at a time. And it, as soon as it's getting to where it's just frustrating, stop. Okay, you don't want to keep pushing past frustration because that will create a resistance to want to come back to this. Kudos to you if you do it every day of the week. If you do it once a week, it'll still be beneficial. I wouldn't do it any less than once a week. Okay, but it'll still be beneficial. It'll still be practicing and exercising that muscle as compared to just going, oh, I can't do that. I don't have time and never doing it at all. If you have a monkey mind, if you have a lot of anxiety, if you're one of those ones that wish you could just put something down and quit thinking about it and ruminating on it, this is going to be one of the best tools, one of the best exercises that you can practice so that later you'll find what happens is once you start being able to allow your mind to just be still for 30 seconds, a minute, all of a sudden you'll, you'll, you'll kind of go over this, all of a sudden this hump and it'll be the, oh my gosh, it'll be like, it'll feel like you, like you've been on a, a mental treadmill and you just for the first time stepped off of it ever. And you're like, whoa, that feels so amazing. And then you'll kind of You'd be excited to get back to it because it'll feel so restful to your mind. And then later, when rumination comes on, you're going to find it's going to be a lot easier for you to go, okay, boop, time to shut off the mind, just like you learn to do in meditation. Boop, shut that down. I don't want to think about that right now. And I have control over what I can think about and what I think about and what I don't think about. Bing, I'm going to shut that down. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with it anymore because I don't want to, or I just will get to it later, whatever it is. Okay. You'll find that you have a lot more 
uh, power behind that and you will love it. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please like it. Please leave your comments below, especially if you have more tips for us on how to uh, get the monkey mind to slow down. We would love to hear them. We'd love your input on it. And if you haven't started following my channel, please do. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.